2010, New Zealand was struck by a severe 7.1 magnitude earthquake which shook most of the Canterbury region. Soon after, a 6.3 magnitude earthquake, which became known as the Christchurch earthquake, devastated the region, leaving 185 dead and thousands of buildings suffering the effects of extensive liquefaction damage. Most recently, 2016 saw a 7.8 magnitude earthquake, which not only affected the Canterbury region, but also shut down much of the nation's capital. Mainmark have been innovators in seismic remediation and ground improvement since 1989, starting with the Newcastle earthquakes in Australia, and they continue to innovate through the most recent seismic events in New Zealand. Perhaps the best known example of Mainmark's innovation was the level correction of the Christchurch Art Gallery. This project involved the development and application of bespoke technologies, which included JOG computer-controlled injection and automated robotic monitoring. Mainmark have achieved a lot of innovation through collaboration, so when it came to levelling the Christchurch Art Gallery, Mainmark approached Trimble in search of technology which didn't yet exist in the form that was required for the job. The New Zealand government, along with some of the world's leaders in earthquake engineering research, undertook what is now known as the Ground Improvement Science Trials, on a scale which the world has never seen before. This is the first time uh, where they have used blast-induced liquefaction to evaluate ground improvement uh, for residential construction. People will be talking about this for decades. Um, this is a once-in-a-lifetime chance. On a world scale, this is unprecedented. This, is, um, this has not been done anywhere else in the world to, to this level. It may not be done again, I would suspect. Following on from their success in the science trials, Mainmark independently approached the Ministry of Business, Employment and Innovation and the Earthquake Commission to further develop a surgical liquefaction mitigation technology that could be delivered beneath existing structures. We're here in the Christchurch Residential Red Zone, where over 15,000 houses have been demolished due to the widespread damaging effects of liquefaction. The Christchurch Residential Red Zone spans 630 hectares of land. Once home to thousands, the land has now been deemed unlikely to be rebuilt on due to the extremely high risk of liquefaction in future events. 
Determined to develop a technology for liquefaction mitigation, Mainmark re-entered the red zone to complete further research and testing of a technology for liquefaction mitigation that can be applied beneath existing properties, which are at risk of liquefaction-induced damage from future seismic events. Resin injection is a method which has long been used nationally and internationally to lift and re-level structures. Expanding resin mixes are injected at shallow depths beneath a structure, which results in ground heave and building lift. Mainmark hypothesized that this method would also result in densification of the ground. Testing was carried out using production panels to mimic a structure. The ground was loaded with a uniform surcharge made up of concrete blocks, and a strip footing was also superimposed to simulate foundation loads. Injection tubes were arranged in a triangular pattern at 1.2 meter centers and inserted to a treatment depth of 8 meters below ground level. Custom-built resin extraction units were connected by hose to mobile plant containers which housed the pumps, power generators and materials. Extensive pre- and post-ground investigations consisted of geophysical testing which included cone penetration testing, cross-hole shear wave velocity testing and seismic dilatometer testing. Each of these tests were carried out within the treatment zone and a further two meters below the ground improvement zone so that Mainmark could determine the effect of the injections and the associated results at increasing depths. The final stage of testing was hydro excavation, which allowed Mainmark to see the final structure of the injected resin, which were then 3D scanned in order to find approximate volume replacement ratio of the resin. A total of five test panels were conducted and all of the results showed significant improvement in ground density and stiffness, greatly reduced surface damage potential and an improvement in static bearing capacity. Results from their series of testing proved that this technology could be delivered beneath an existing structure and had opened up a lot more opportunities for Mainmark to innovate further as well as providing engineers with a new tool for liquefaction mitigation. Now that their research has been internationally peer-reviewed, Mainmark are now able to present a series of papers nationally and internationally sharing their findings with the engineering community. Starting with the 2017 New Zealand Society of Earthquake Engineering Conference in New Zealand. Mainmark's success in this area has already seen international interest from Japan and the United States for potential applications in these liquefaction susceptible zones. Mainmark are also continuing to explore delivery innovations, including bespoke equipment and their own software design package, which aims to predict the increase in ground strength which can be achieved in various soil types. Taking their science to the real world, Mainmark undertook and successfully completed its first large-scale liquefaction mitigation project beneath a large retail complex in Christchurch. Northwood Supercenter was a large-scale seismic retrofit project which involved both structural and geotechnical technologies to bring it back to 100% of a new building standard. So my role was to, one, get capital approved and have a repair methodology approved. Um, by the fund, which is managed by AMP Capital but owned by Canadian Life Pension Funds, and then to take that and progress it through to completion. The first scheme that was proposed was demolition and rebuild. There were talk of repair methodologies, and the first one that was actually discussed was piling, and the issue with piling was that we had to vacate the tenancies, but it would have still been enormously invasive. We have three operating fully established tenants in that space, one of them being a supermarket, um, which is an anchor tenancy to that site and being able to take that out of play for a, con a considerable period was not really seen as being advantageous. We're trying to repair uh, you know, like a building and keep tenants operational, but we would have seen that to being almost impossible. Resin was injected to 8 metres below ground level beneath load bearing walls and 4 metres below ground level beneath floor slabs. Being a large structure, over 3,000 injection points in total were required for the project and Mainmark's work was carried out outside of business hours to reduce interruption and prevent loss of income to the tenants and asset owner. Equipment, machinery and data logging systems were bespoke creations for this project, some of which required up to eight months of research and development before starting the project. The resin injection and tube extraction systems were integrated with an automatic data logging system. The system was synced such that the data could be immediately analysed after each night shift. This required innovation in both software and mechanical engineering, 
and the resulting custom iPad application saved precious injection time for both the machine operators and project managers. Further innovation was also required for angled injections to be conducted beneath hygiene areas. This meant that no reinstating and replacement work to floor slabs was required, which would have been an extensive cost and interruption to the tenants. We obviously had um, guys that were able to oversee and check all of the stuff prior to it being undertaken in the first place. And their technology was able to, um, to monitor that to pinpoint accuracy. The outcome of that, we've had some shakes since and there's been absolutely no effect, like zero effect notice. And in actual fact we've even done surveys post doing these works to try and establish whether or not there's been any effects and there's been none. So we would suspect that even our own due diligence of what's been done, we think that that evidence is um, suggesting that that work has done something more than what we'd expected. I'll tell you what was the, probably the biggest wow moment for our business was me taking through the head of asset management, the head of development management, fund analyst team there as well. So we had some pretty key players there and we walked through and the thing that they noticed was the lack of impact to the way that the supermarket was operating. These tubes are running around all over the place, but they're all collated into one area and they bridge over and there was no effect. That required a fair bit of planning and, and Main Mart were a key component of that. A lot of the tenants now very much realise that these buildings, some of them aren't 100% MBS and they're wanting to know explicitly what those numbers are so that they can give full comfort to not only the staff but also uh, I guess the public about the way in which that building would perform in a potential earthquake. So from our perspective our target was always going to be 100% because we weren't going to go into this building and into this sort of repair without coming out as best we can possibly be. That again gave our structural engineer a lot of confidence at the end being able to say, you know, hey look, our structure's fine, but we know we don't necessarily have these liquefaction effects, or that we've at least mitigated at best all of them, um, or as much as we can, and therefore that, that building is rated 100% MBS. And that's been reflected post that by our tenants being charged the rents for a 100% MBS building, which is something that our, our fund manager and our property managers are very, very happy with. Thank you.